Now let's solve a problem from gate 2020 set to mechanical engineering. It is a problem on thin pressure vessels and it is slightly different than the type of problems that we solved. Conceptually and everything it is very similar but there is slight change in this question which makes this question little bit interesting, little bit tricky and there are certain chances of making silly mistake in this question. The question says that uh, a thin walled cylinder of radius r and thickness t is open at both ends. Now generally whatever pressure vessels we see in the questions are closed at both ends but it is open at both ends it is totally hollow getting the point and it fits snugly between two rigid walls under ambient condition as shown means you have a cylindrical pressure vessel thin pressure vessel open at both ends and you inserted that snugly means easily without applying uh, a lot of force but without having any gap all right so it in a way you can say that it fits perfectly into the gap between two rigid walls okay this is having radius r which is shown in the diagram this is the central axis of that pressure vessel okay and it is inserted at ambient condition this is also a very important keyword although this keyword does not have any role in this but at normal temperature it was uh, you know inserted if it was added or inserted at some higher or lower temperature then its actual length might change might try to you know uh, change when it comes to ambient temperature when it comes to ambient condition but the question is not testing you on that so this keyword of ambient condition is simply uh, telling you that at normal initial temperature you have uh, inserted that between rigid walls now the material of the cylinder has Young's modulus E, Poisson ratio nu, coefficient of thermal expansion alpha. So it has defined all parameters. What is the minimum rise in temperature delta T of cylinder? In bracket it gave you assume uniform cylinder temperature with no buckling of cylinder which is required to prevent gas leakage if cylinder has to store the gas at an internal pressure of P above the atmosphere. So it's a quite lengthy line, right? So let's break it down. Let me help you understand this line by breaking it down into smaller parts. It is asking you what is minimum rise in temperature delta T of cylinder. So we are planning to heat this up. We are trying to planning to increase its temperature. This is clear from this line. In bracket it says assuming assume uniform cylinder temperature with no buckling of cylinder means when you are going to heat it, Obviously, there will be changes in the dimension and that change in dimension may try to buckle it. But that we don't have to consider that there is any kind of buckling at all. And the temperature generation is uniform throughout. So this is what this bracket tells. So it has simplified things for us. Great. Now, the rise in temperature required to prevent gas leakage. Gas leakage. Now, this is something that you have to think that from... Uh, what manner gas can leak i will come to that if cylinder has to store the gas at an internal pressure of p above the atmosphere so p is going to be the pressure above the atmosphere this will help us in using the formula of thin cylinder that we know now coming to the discussion of this keyword gas leakage how it how the gas can leak when you increase the temperature that let's understand first and then we have to calculate that how much temperature we can increase by heating it up such that there is no gas leakage. What is the minimum rise in temperature that will prevent gas leakage, that will not cause any gas leakage. Look, do not forget that this thin cylinder is in a way open at both ends, right? Cover ends are not present there. So in case if its length decreases what will happen the ends will be totally free if somehow its length is decreased then ends will be totally open and that is what leakage is about when it will leak when it will lose the contact with the rigid wall then gas leakage is possible right and when it will leave the contact with the rigid walls when this strain along this length starts to uh, you know be compressive then it will lose the contact with the wall then it will be open at the ends and that is the condition of air leakage 
This is the common sense that you have to apply. That how it can leak. There will be changes in the dimension, right? Changing the diameter and radius is not merely going to cause the leakage, right? But if the length changes, then definitely leakage is possible, especially when the length decreases. If the length tries to increase, no issue at all. But if length try to decrease, then the gap will be present and air can leak. That you have to think on your own. This is the common sense, right? That you have to apply. And now this condition you have to assume that upon increasing the temperature, is it possible that a situation like this will occur? That its length will reduce. Generally, what do you have? Generally, you have that upon heating it, the length generally increases, right? But this is pressure vessel. There are two different stresses acting generally in case of closed ones. The uh, longitudinal and the circumferential, right? What will be the stresses acting in this case? Let's look at that first. What was the reason for longitudinal stress in case of thin pressure vessels? There is a pressure vessel closed at both the ends. The pressure of gas inside is trying to push at the top and the bottom, at the ends of it, right? This is the cylinder. We have the pressure of gases inside which is hitting it. Obviously at the curved surface it is hitting but right now we are only considering the end part, the top and bottom cover. It is hitting them. It is trying to move them apart. But the curved surface has held them together. But the curved surface will get stretched because both of them are trying to move away but curved surface is holding them. That was the cause of the longitudinal stress. That is what we have covered in the syllabus, right? But what is happening here? End cover is not present. At the end what you have? You have rigid wall. It will apply pressure at rigid wall. That is not going to cause the stress in the curved surface of this particular pressure vessel. Right? It is not connected as such to the rigid wall. It is not, you know, uh, uh, completely joined to that surface. It is just fitted there. It can lose the contact as soon as its dimension changes. Right? It's not a permanent joint. That is why the pressure of the gas at the ends has no effect on the value of longitudinal or this axial stress. So in this case, if you draw any element, there will be no stress along this axis. There will be only circumferential or hoop stress in this case. This is something that you need to pick from the keyword open at both ends. And now what you have, you have one type of stress, circumferential or hoop stress acting. Now you can easily assume, not assume, visualize, you can easily visualize that due to this sigma c circumferential stress, what will happen? The radius or diameter will try to expand, the circumference will try to expand. And since Poisson ratio is to be considered, automatically length will reduce. Now since only circumferential stress is acting, so obviously the circumference or diameter or radius is going to get enlarged. But since Poisson ratio is given in the equation, so Poisson effect is also to be considered which will reduce the length, right? And as I have told you, if the length is reduced from this initial value, air leakage will start. And to counteract it, to prevent it, what we are doing? We are increasing the temperature because increasing the temperature is increasing the dimensions, right? If you increase the temperature, if you heat it up, the length is going to get increased. And you just have to increase it such that leakage, gas leakage is prevented. Right? So how much is the reduction in the dimension due to the circumferential stress? That much increase in dimension is needed to be done by increasing the temperature. So you just need to equate both the strain. The strain due to the stress sigma c along the longitudinal direction and the strain in the longitudinal direction as a result of thermal expansion. So as a result of the stress sigma c, what will be the value of strain along longitudinal direction? What is the general expression of it? This is the general expression right for thin pressure vessel. Now since sigma l is 0 here, so directly we can write that this strain is minus nu sigma c by e. Clearly it is coming out negative. You can also see that it's uh, compressive strain. Dimension will decrease. And this much increase you need to do in the temperature in order to compensate it. Correct? 
what you can do the expansion or strain simply you can write thermal we know it is equal to alpha delta t correct and this much reduction should be compensated by this much increase so what you need to do to find out the value of delta t since this strain should be equal to this you just have to equate both of them but we only have to equate the magnitude since we know that this much is already we know that it is the reduction in the value of strain so same should be the expansion so we are only considering the magnitude here so sine we are not considering here since we know that it is compression or what you can do you can simply add both of them up that sigma uh, l plus sigma thermal is equal to zero and then you send this one on the other side so automatically sign will become positive that is another way so delta t means alpha delta t this alpha delta t is equal to nu sigma c divided by e and if you simplify it you will get delta t is equal to nu and since sigma c is p r by t right you have to write in terms of radius so what you will get you will get p r nu divided by alpha t e what are the options which are matching this option b p r nu divided by alpha t e this is the required answer all right so it was a very direct straightforward question nothing uh, which we discuss here is something that you don't know but question was slightly varied it was made slightly tricky by making the thin pressure vessel the thin cylinder as open that's it all right